OpenAI is back with a new agents framework. So they used to have this thing called Swarm, and this came out about five months ago, and people absolutely loved it. But the problem was they were not maintaining it, and they just kind of left it on GitHub for people to make their own version of Swarm. That didn't stop people from using it. But now they're back, and there were a bunch of stuff on their press release that, but these are the things that stood out to me. A bunch of stuff that, that is built in. So we have multi-agent orchest orchestration made very easy. So they call this handoff. So when an agent is done, they can pass the context or the results of the tools to the next agent to be able to continue the task. Why do we do this instead of having one agent with a big instructions prompt? Well, it's harder to debug and evaluate that. We want to evaluate agents based on its sole responsibility. That's easier to optimize later on in the future. Built-in guardrails, what does that mean? Um, input sanitization and input kind of like, you know, guardrails for like abuse and stuff like that. And output as well. And lifecycle hooks. So this is really interesting. Um, with one line of code, again, you can tap into whatever stage that the agent is running. Maybe it's just started. You can tap into that event and do something with it. Maybe the agent is handing off to another agent. Then you can tap into that as well and then do something there. Maybe like do some transformation. And last but not least, we have some built-in tools. Work straight out of the box. So we have uh, web search and we have computer to use. Web search seems like it's not using... As far as we can tell, it doesn't seem like it's using anything third party. It's using this technology that OpenAI has built in house. What I want to show you today are two examples. One is like the most absolute basic, you know, example to get you started with uh, Agent SDK. This agent has no tools. And the fun part about building agents with this particular framework is that if you use it with, with OpenAI, um, and you, you can use this with other um, providers like Gemini and any provider that has an SDK that kind of like can pass through OpenAI's um, SDK before, like Gemini or Grok, then you can use um, the, those providers here as well. But if you use OpenAI, uh, this tracing that is just works out of the box and doesn't cost you any, anything extra. So you don't have to use something like, you know, Langsmith or Helicone to, to trace your stuff. Okay, so here I have literally the most basic agent. And all I had to do was, you know, pip install um, OpenAI-agents. And then I set up my OpenAI API key. I actually had some issues with uh, setting up this key because the documentation says that I can just set this up um, as my environment variable. And then it will just work out of the box. But turns out it didn't. So I had to do this. And there was like a method that I can import here. It says set default open AI API key. And I can just set that. And that works. Um, so I'm just going to run this real quick. Basic agent. And then all this agent does is um, it has an instruction. It says you are a sassy code instructor. And then here's how you run the agent. Um, so there are a couple of ways you can run an agent. Um, you can run like this, which is going to be async. Um, Yes, yeah, so it's gonna return uh, an async kind of like result, uh, or you can just run a sync, which will just give you the result in a synchronous way. So you run this, and then you get the like you know the output here, and the model is GPT-40. Pretty straightforward, and this is all you need to like instantiate an, an agent. You just import agent from from uh, from agents. So. Once we have that, right, uh, what we can do is you can actually, this is the fun part, uh, we can go and see the traces. So uh, if you have an OpenAI API account, which I'm sure you, sh you should have one to be able to try this, you can go in here um, to the dashboard and then to traces. And then what you'll see is you, you'll see traces of your agent shown up on here automatically. So if this is the last one that we had. Um, took less than a second and we, we even have like you know metadata about hand, hands offs and and tools so apparently we didn't use any of those things so it says zero we go in here and you know obviously we name our agent assistant uh here so that's the name that will show up so if, you, if you've used like langsmith or like any observability tools before you'll know right away um and yeah and this is traced so 
the only weird thing is usually in like observability tools like that you have uh, human feedbacks that you can set so that eventually you can like create like a fine-tuning data set or a data set to you can go back and do prompt optimization with dspy or something like that and those these error these thumbs ups and down usually are for for those purposes but here it's just for open ai <laughs> to to give feedback to open ai so that's kind of useless um, but yeah, so we can see some stats here for the choices. Again, it works well right out of the box. I, I didn't have to set up anything. Okay, so the second example is a more realistic representation of what an agent would look like in like a real product. So this agent should have some tools. So in our example, it's going to have two tools, web search, but not the one that is built in for OpenAI. I'm using Tavili, which is a service that I, that I use in my actual product that I am a fan of. And a second tool is it's a it's a retrieval tool, so it's a rag. Again, I'm not using the tool that they gave me from OpenAI. OpenAI has this thing called File Search, but I'm not using that. I'm using this thing called uh, Vectorize. So it's a really fast way to like bootstrap up a, a vector database and like retrieval in like less than two minutes. It's amazing, and it has built-in web scraping too. So those are the two tools that I has. And then it has a more complex instructions of like when to use tools and then it has carry over context. So like every step in the agent run, uh, there's going to be like this thing called context. So if you're coming from like land graph, that's kind of like state, um, it'll be carry over from like, oh, the agent just called a tool, the tool has results. Maybe you can save that in the context and use that in the next tool or something like that or pop it back to the LLM. Okay, so let me show you what this looks like and how it works. So I'm gonna go UV run agent with, okay, I'll run that. And then when you grab my um, my code, um, when you run this, there's gonna be an option for you to see a lot of logging. Cause like I said before, there's a uh, life cycle um, hooks that you can tap into, which is very, very neat. And you can log or you can like do whatever you want with them. So I'm just gonna say like, uh, yes here. And then all this program does is it basically takes a question from me and I have a knowledge base about um, a bunch of like articles about founders and startups, like about like Steve Jobs and founder of Reddit and stuff like that. And I can ask questions about that. And if the question brings in articles that didn't make sense, then the agent will have to go online and search for stuff using uh, the search tool, Tavili. So I'll say like, uh, what are, okay, who is the CEO of OpenAI, for example? So it's gonna go through the retrieval um, tool first. Um, and then what it's gonna do is gonna form, the agent's gonna try to form a query and then search. And then apparently, because it couldn't find anything, that's why it switches from the search founder articles tool to Tavili search tool, which is a web search tool. And then went online and searched for um, the result and then the result came back like this. And then eventually we have like this, this end context that shows us like, you know, what happened and stuff like that. This gets carried over throughout the entire run. Um, and I can ask something that is actually part of the, the knowledge base, which is something like, uh, what are lessons from Jeff Bezos? Because I know that there are some articles about Jeff Bezos in the uh, the knowledge base. So it's going to run the search founder um, articles tool. And this time around, because it was able to find relevant information, it didn't run the web search tool. Um, so it just stopped there. Cool. Okay. So while we're doing all that, um, let me also just show you guys what the traces look like over here. Because... We have free tracing from OpenAI. So these are the two runs that we just saw from the agent. First one, uh, two, two tools calls uh, because it couldn't find the information from the retrieval tool for the first time. So it had to call web search. Second time around, it found the information from retrieval tool, so it only ran it once. So let's take a look here. And as you can see, everything looks pretty pristine in this tool it's tracing platform um built by OpenAI, and you can see like you know 
you got the input so the system instructions here everything's formatted pretty nicely and then we got like the um what do you call it the um message history so from like user who is the ceo of open open ai and then first it's gonna it called the uh, search founder articles tool and let me just show you the code actually when you go to this code base the tools are all in this tool tools folder here and the retrieve articles tool is this file right here and what you'll see is you can all you have to do is wrap a python function in a decorator called function tool which came from um the agents sdk and then this function right here all of its parameters is now available for the model to see and then it'll know okay so for the query it's supposed to be string i should probably pass the user's query in here or like a in reformed query in here um and then the number of results and then whether or not i use view ranking this is just part of like the how the retrieval endpoint works so these are all the parameters that i can use and the model was able to pass in a couple of things here and then um, finally got back um, some pretty bad results so it actually let me just go show you here these are the articles or the documents or the chunks that came back from the retrieval tool so it looked at all this stuff and it was like okay none of this is like useful let me call another tool so i would call it tavili search and then to leave for tavili it came back um from this article about sam altman coming back to work after getting fired so it was like okay now i guess this tool solved the problem and finally it has so this is a OpenAI GPT 4.0 call. And then we got retrieval tool, we got tabili search, and then finally another OpenAI GPT 4.0 generation to kind of finally do the generation part of like, okay, look at the sources and give me the final answer based on the web search tool. So it sees the output of this tool the search articles tool and then it also sees the tabili search tool and then give me an answer like this um even format it with like the source and everything too which is interesting but yeah so traces tracing works right out of the box so let me just dive right in here and then show you what any of this stuff means um so this is the retrieval tool that hits my knowledge base which is a vector database and through the service called Vectorize. Um, everything is encapsulated in um, this tool right here. And then the Tavili tool, which is a web search tool, um, basically you know, set up Tavili SDK, it's very simple. And then um, we got the uh, function that actually calls Tavili. And then we have a tool that kind of like encapsulates it a little bit. And then, uh, yeah, that's pretty much pretty much it. You can just put this on top of any Python function and it will just work. Okay, so that's all. The, those are all the tools. Let's go to the actual agent. And then we'll just take a look at this real quick. And even for the agent, like, everything is pretty uh, pretty short, pretty straightforward. Um, here, I'm just setting up logging so that I can tap into, like, the different lifecycle points. Um, you can take a look at this part if you want. And then... Again, to create an agent, just you know, import this agent thing from the agent's SDK, and then you pass in this agent context, which could be anything from like a patent class or like a data class. So let me show you that. This one's a data class. So all I'm doing here is I'm doing, um, okay, so I got like this property here called recent searches. I got recent documents, last full is used. You can basically keep whatever you want here. You can keep like uh, how many, times this agent had run or something like that and then as long as you like keep updating that value then it will be carried over and saved either in the database or your um, in memory yeah so like again very similar to like land graph state um so that's how it works and i'm gonna go down here this is the function that kind of like create a, a infinite loop so that we can just keep trying this tool over and over with this agent um, so I got my my logger here. I can turn it off and on. Um, I got my my agent. So this is how you run an agent. Again, this is how you run an agent in async. Um, so it will give you an async kind of like uh, promise result. Uh, finally, and if you don't want to do that, if you don't want like you know a promise, you can just do run sync. 
and then that's pretty much it everything else is just like displaying things nicely in the um in the terminal so yeah that's um that's the ai agents sdk um it was uh it was pretty easy to set up um The only thing that I that kind of tripped me up uh, was um, the messages history. Like I I couldn't find a way to tap into that. And this is day one. They they just launched this today. But I couldn't find anything about like messages history, so I can't like can't really modify it. And then like this this all this stage in this. If maybe it's in the documentation. Maybe I haven't written read it like properly. So if you know how to deal with messages history, let me know. Um, but yeah, so. Um, AI agents SDK for OpenAI. Give it a shot. Um, I'll probably put out some more video videos about like the more in-depth stuff of like setting up this this SDK, this framework to to build more complicated things. So uh, watch out for those videos. Like and subscribe. And uh, those videos will be up in a couple of days. So stay tuned for that. Thanks for watching.